So the canal surgery is helped bypass only the precanalicular resistance and hence the post-op IOP will not be less than 14, 15 millimeters of mercury range. So if there is a patient who needs very low intraocular pressures, um, canal-based surgeries may not be the way to go. So why canal surgery? Because it's more physiologic in nature. It restores natural drainage pathways and avoids blubs and blub-related pathology. Examples that are FDA approved at this point include eye stent, the trivectome, and the canal plastic. So my practice at this point is converted mostly into eye stent procedures for mild moderate glaucomas and canaloplasty for moderate to severe glaucomas where the insurance allows me. And of course, the indications for the glaucoma drainage devices such as the amet valve and the bar vault, I already went through them. They are a completely different category compared to these patients with open angle glaucoma and with mild to moderate glaucomas. Let's go through canaloplasty in some detail, which is my favorite glaucoma surgery for patients with advanced glaucoma. It consists of viscodilation of the Schlem's canal to 300 to 350 microns using a 200 micron microcatheter. Works by reducing the resistance to the outflow pathway. It's much more physiologic in nature compared to trabeculectomy operation. For, the, for this operation, you need the eye lumen which lights up the microcatheter. Here is the microcatheter that comes in a packet that's sealed. Uh, one end of it is attached to this, uh, this uh, transparent lumen um, and the other end is, uh, has two openings. One is attached to this um, uh, Helon TV uh, and, uh, and this plug that's attached to the illuminator that you just saw. So when you attach this end to the illuminator, the tip of the microcatheter lights up with a red light. And to, once you have the microcatheter in the canal, you want to stretch the canal by injecting Helon GV. That's the concept. Here is the Helon GV syringe. And so how does it work once you make the, uh, the opening, once you recognize the canal and dissect the canal at 12 o'clock? You want to stretch the entire canal 360 degrees by passing the microcatheter. And then you want to inject viscoelastic to stretch the canal sufficiently to approximately 250 to 300 microns. And at the end of it, to stretch the trabecular meshwork dilated of the dilated canal, you want to tie, leave behind a tenoproline stent. Here are some of the surgical steps. Here is an eye. Uh, at the very beginning, you always want to use the seven of Vicryl to pull the eye down. You're looking from this end, and the patient's eye is looking down. Here is a limbal peritomy, followed by septenance injection of the lidocaine epinephrine mixture. This is followed by minimal dissection using Vescard scissors. Then a five millimeter by five millimeter partial thickness limbal, I mean, corneoscleral flap. This dissection is done using a 15 degree sharp blade. Once the, the, the sclera, so superficial scleral flap is dissected, you can see this is the band of collagen that I've been talking about, which is where this canal will be located. And you extend this by about 0.3 millimeters into clear cornea. At this stage, you want to dissect the inner corneoscleral flap, which is what we are outlining here, leaving a 0.5 millimeter rim around this lake. And this dissection is completed using a crescent blade at 95% depth, during which stage, as you can see here, the Schlem's canal is de-roofed and the canal dissection is taken into clay cornea to create, at the level of decimate membrane, to create a 0.3 millimeter decimate window. 
So by the time you're done with this dissection, what you are looking at is a canal that's exposed and a decimate window that's exposed. So fluid should be percolating both from the decimate window and the trabecular meshwork via the canal that's opened up, de-roofed into this lake that you've created. Then you stretch the canal and then pass the microcatheter, which is what we're doing here. Um, gently so it goes 360 degrees and comes out through the other end. At this stage you tie a tenoproline stent to it and uh, withdraw the microcatheter in the counterclockwise fashion and during the process you inject small quantity of Helon GV um, in three or four settings till the microcatheter is completely withdrawn leaving the tenoproline stent behind. The tenoproline is then tight tied to exert tension on the and anterior trabecular meshwork and that about completes the operation. Now here is the trabecular mesh, decimates membrane, here is the, the, the Schwalbe's line, here is the canal and here is the lake which is lying on top of the supraciliary space. So the fluid is accumulating in that lake and also in the dilated canal. And then of course you're gonna close this little flap with five sutures to shut it down so there's no blood that's formed. And then tack the conjunctiva back to the limbus, which is why you will not see any blood formation in these cases. When it works, this is a beautiful surgery. Intraocular pressures in my hands are pretty close to those following trabeculectomy operation. Here is how the patient looks one day after the operation. There's no ugly blob as you can see. Chamber is formed. The vision recovery is much faster in these patients and as you can see on your view, you can see the, the tenoproline stent right about there. It appears like a blue band in the canal. And here is the ultrasound image of the same. Here is the canal pre-op and here is the canal that's completely dilated to approximately 350 microns with the stent located right there in the post-op here.